What is going on you guys and welcome back to the series. So Eugene and I got the car tuned up. I was able to drive the car around without the supercharger installed yet um, to be able to check out the fuel upgrades and everything that I had made to the vehicle. But after a couple of days, I began running into a couple of problems. So problem number one was that I had a bit of an electronic burning smell coming from the front of the car after about three days. Initially, I thought this probably had to do with the harness that powers the two gauges that I installed. But after about a week, I had an issue occasionally with a couple of my fuel pumps going out on me. Um, it happened a couple of times while I was parked where I couldn't actually prime the pump. And it even happened to me once while I was moving and I quickly had to switch on that second pump that I installed inside the radium surge tank. Um, so this is clearly a fuel pump issue, probably has something to do with the relay box. We're gonna try and debug this in a second. Now for the second issue, I'm actually gonna need my whiteboard. So give me just a second here. So basically what I found was that after running the car for a little while, if I were to shut the engine off and wait about 15 to 30 minutes, come back to the car and try to start it again, I wouldn't be able to start the vehicle. And if I went and looked at my fuel pressure gauge, I found that my fuel pressure could go upwards of 100 PSI. So this is what the fuel system currently looks like in my car. We've got the two fuel pumps in the radium surge tank. They feed up through a Y joint, through a check valve, past the fuel access port where the fuel gauge is currently reading over 100 PSI and then that fuel flows through the injectors. Now, originally the way that this fuel system worked is that there was no check valve or fuel pressure port here. Um, so if somehow the fuel were to increase in pressure, that increase in fuel pressure would just bleed back through the regulator. Because we're installing a performance regulator, however, and those regulators tend to bleed pressure off pretty quickly, we decided to put in a check valve to be able to hold that pressure. Problem is, when you turn your engine off, it's still quite hot and that engine ended up heating up the fuel lines, which then pressurizes this side of the fuel system to over 100 PSI. Is 100 PSI necessarily dangerous? Well, the fuel lines will probably be okay, but probably is really not what we're looking for here. Um, originally, the car wasn't designed to run with a fuel pressure of over 100 PSI. Moreover, the injectors won't even open at that pressure. Um, in fact, I couldn't start the car until I let the engine cool down a little bit, and then the injectors were finally able to open again. Um, so the solution to this is we're going to have to go ahead and remove that check valve. So this is what the original fuel fitting looked like. Now the thing we're going to get rid of is the check valve, so we're going to go ahead and set that aside. Uh, if we just go ahead and remove these couple of pieces here, we can easily just turn this around so that this will go and plug in to our uh, hose barb fitting. And then we can actually swap this out with the original fitting that Radium provided so that we can actually use this now for the factory fitting. And then we've got something that's much smaller and a little bit easier to work with when we're plugging this back into the car. So we've got that first problem fixed. Hopefully we won't be having any issues with 100 PSI hitting our fuel lines now. Uh, so now if we go ahead and take a look at our fuel pressure. We're currently sitting at zero. That's obviously because we went and drained the fuel out when we were unplugging those lines. But when I hit the on button, ignition on, I don't actually hear the fuel pumps firing. However, if we go ahead and turn the car off, wait for a second. I'm also gonna go ahead and enable that secondary pump that I have installed for the radium system because as you guys saw in that surge tank install video, I actually installed two pumps. That second pump is controlled by the switch. With that pump turned on, if I hit the on button, I can actually hear that second pump firing and we can actually see that our fuel pressure has gotten all the way up to 44 PSI. So that begs the question, what's going on here? Well, because I've been running those two pumps for a couple of weeks, it's been running current through the electrical system that I have here. And that probably has something to do with the burning smell that I've been getting. Um, one thing we can do though, before we start pulling apart our glove box to take a look, is we can actually go and probe the uh, nuts for each of those fuel pumps. So on top of that radium surge tank, we've obviously got a couple of connectors we can check. So yeah, what we'll go ahead and do is take out our multimeter and see if we can play around with the surge tank. All right, so I've got my trusty multimeter here, and we're gonna go and measure the resistance across both of the pumps using the two pump leads. Um, I'm sorry that I can't really show you guys down in here very well, um, but we're just gonna be measuring across those two pump pins. Originally in the video for the surge tank install, I said it was four ohms, but that's definitely not correct. Um, AEM says the resistance is supposed to be closer to an ohm. 
All right, so I know it's a little bit difficult to see in the light here, but I'm getting about 0.8 of an ohm, which is pretty much what we expect to see from this pump. Um, but now we want to see what the actual voltage is that each of these pumps are getting. So for that, I'm going to set the multimeter up. I'm going to prime the pump by turning on the engine, or if you have the Ecutec software, you can just tell it to turn the pump on. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and prime my pump and see what the voltage is it's getting to each of those pumps. The pump that's actually working had a respectable voltage of about 11.5. Uh, which is pretty much what we want to see for that pump to be able to actually turn on. The pump that's not working, however, had a, a very pitiful 0.08 volts, which is definitely not what it's supposed to be getting. I imagine more than likely we have a burnt or completely broken fuse. Um, that would be my best guess. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take apart our glove box and see if we can get to that relay and fuse box. So after a very short inspection, I think I have found the problem. So the two pumps that I've been running are these two here on the right side, and we can see that they have slowly begun to melt. All right, I seem to have stumbled upon a uh, more serious problem here. It looks like I have gotten a couple of these power wires that lead from the battery down to those two relays. Uh, these appear to have started to melt or somehow chemically react. All right, so I've had a little while to take a look at this to try and understand what's going on. And ultimately, Eugene, my tuner's uh, advice has kind of won over. Um, what's going on here is these wires that I got are copper clad aluminum. So what that means is that the center of each of the wire strands actually has a little bit of aluminum in it. And so the carrying capacity of these wires, even though they're 12 gauge, um, is a lot closer to something like a 14 gauge wire. So to fix this, I'm switching over to some new OFC wire. This is pure copper all the way through. Um, it's rated for a much higher current capacity of about 30 amps. All right, so the relay box wiring has been updated and everything's been plugged back in place. I've got the grounding wire attached to the ECU case and I put the ECU back up in the car. The relay box is kind of loosely dangling there if you can see that in the bottom right hand corner. So I've currently got the Ecutech software pulled up right now and there's actually a fuel pump tool that we can use. And if you guys can hear that now, the fuel pumps are actually running. Now, we don't wanna do this for too long. Um, we wanna keep an eye on the battery voltage and make sure it doesn't get too low. Um, but what we can do now is let these pumps run for a little bit. And then I can walk over to the relay box and I can feel on it to see if the wires are getting warm or hot like they used to with the old wiring. And hello again from two weeks later after that last shot that I took. Um, the wiring has been finished within the relay box. It was completely replaced with copper wire. Um, as you guys saw, I was able to verify that it wasn't getting warm. And after the uh, past couple of weeks of driving the car around, um, I haven't had any issue with the electronics burning at this point. Do not buy copper clad aluminum. That stuff is absolutely terrible. Um, the gauge system for that doesn't quite work the same. 12 gauge wire is more like 14 if you go with copper clad aluminum. So just go straight copper. That's really the only way to go. Um, so what have I been up to these past couple of weeks while I hadn't been uploading videos? Well, as you guys might be able to see there, um, the supercharger build is pretty much complete. So uh, yeah, I have been pretty busy. Um, that's completely built now. I've been driving it for a few days. The car runs really well. Um, I'm not gonna say anything more on that. You guys are gonna have to wait till some of the upcoming future videos. Um, but yes, the supercharger build is complete. The build video should be going up next week. But back to this video, um, I hope you guys are able to take something away from this, whether it be ensuring that you're using the right wiring or avoiding a check valve. Uh, really the whole point though was to emphasize the fact that these types of builds, especially if you're doing it your first time like me, uh, it's not really gonna go smoothly. You're gonna run into problems, so you need to be prepared for that. Um, I always try to be transparent with the mistakes that I make because you guys are probably gonna run into similar issues, so you just need to be prepared for that. If any of you guys are located in Texas or even anywhere else in the US, uh, Nismo Fiesta in Austin, Texas, I think technically Bandera, um, is going to be happening on the weekend of the 10th of October. I am planning on going to that, so if you want to see this build in person, feel free to attend Nismo Fiesta. I hope to see some of y'all out there, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for the next installment where we actually build the supercharger on the 370. I'll see y'all in the next video. Later. Later.